Let's now set up a system of linear equations to solve this problem here. So let's spend a minute reading through the problem. At HD College, students need to take a 100 level math and English course plus an optional philosophy course. In any quarter, the college needs to make available six less English sec sections than math sections. In any quarter, student demand for the optional philosophy course is half as many sections as English sections. Available classrooms limits the total sections of all three courses to 51. Given these constraints, how many sections of each course should the college make available each quarter to meet the demand? And so now to identify the variables as first thing in setting up our system of equations, then we are going to look straight into the very final question right here. When it says, uh, where it says, given these constraints, so these are the constraints, how many sections of each course should the college make available each quarter to meet the demand? But ultimately, how many sections of each course? So in that case, we need a section for math. So I'm going to call that m is the variable for the number of sections for math. The students at that college also need to take English course and E represent the number of sections. for English. And the, the students there also need to take philosophy, so I'm going to call a variable with the name capital P for the number of sections. For philosophy. And so once we have identified all the variables and as, as well as knowing how many variables we are looking for, then ideally in this problem, since we are looking at three variables, we should be able to find three relationships among the variables. And so let's now go ahead and look for the three relationships among the three variables m, e, and p. I recognize that this body part, this middle part of the problem right here is where it's having indicating all that requirements or all that relationships among the three variables. So let's read them one by one here. The first thing indicated to us in any quarter, the college needs to make six available less English sections than math sections. Six less English sections than math sections. So extracting out that piece of information, this is what we found out as a relationship. This is a relationship between M and E. So here we found out that E, the number of English sections, is less than math sections by 6. So M minus 6. So E equals M minus 6. Or you can also think of that as uh, E plus 6 equals M. There are many ways how we can understand that. but these are should be these should be the same these two should be the same relationship the next piece of information says in any quarter student demand for the optional philosophy course is 
have as many sections as English sections. So philosophy course is half as many sections as English section. So this piece of information relates the two variables P and E. And philosophy course is half as many sections as English. So philosophy and translating directly from, from word into uh, a, a mathematical relationship here then P equals uh, half as many sections of English. So half the number of uh, English sections. So P equals one half E. But then since we're having a fraction here, it would be more convenient if we can rewrite our relationship here. We already found a, the second relationship, but what I'm saying now is that as a, as a treatment for having a fraction here, then we can multiply both sides. So P equals one half E is also the same as two P equals E. So we have a, a second relationship. Let's look for the third relationship here. Available classrooms limits the total sections, total sections of all three courses being limited to 51. So classroom limits the total sections to 51. That means all three variables, the English courses, and the math courses or the sections total together with the philosophy section are limited to 51 sections because we have limited space at HD College. So as far as the relationship we have found we have three variables, three unknowns and we have found three relationships. That's one here E equals M minus 6 P equals one half E, or more conveniently, two P equals E, and E plus M plus P must equal fifty-one. Setting up our three relationships into a system of equation. Let's put our last relationship that we found here as the first equation, since right now immediately in the way how it looks. It shows all three variables in full. So that is good for our being our first equation since it has completely all three variables. X E plus M plus P equals 51. That's our first equation. Any one of the other relationships here, let's say E equals M minus 6 or E plus 6 equals M Another intention of setting up a system of linear equations is that we want to definitely put, so in any of these relationships, we want to put all variables to the left hand side and line them up with these uh, three variables that are already here in the first equation. So right from this second equation here, I am going to put that as the following. E plus 6 equals M, we can put the 6 on the opposite side, or how about uh, from here E equals M minus 6, we can put the, the constant term on the opposite side, and here the E variable lines up with E from the earlier columns, M minus 6, but now I'm going to subtract M from both sides, so here I'm ending up with E minus M equals negative 6, and we don't have a P variable in this second relationship. So the way it reads now, E minus M plus 0P equals minus 6. That's what the relationship is producing as an equation in our system of linear equation. The third equation here, looking at the more convenient form 2P equals E, but once again, we need to put all variables uh, to the left-hand side. So right here, we can rewrite our equation as minus E plus 2p equals 0. And that equation here is what we're going to be putting at in, into our system of linear equation, minus e. We don't have a variable m in this equation. So now we're going to be putting that here, plus 2p equals 0. So how I see it here is minus e plus 0m plus 2p equals 0. But this is now 
our successful setup of the system of linear equations and you can see that once again it, it is a purpose that we set up so in a way so that all variables each variable is being lined up in one column throughout the different equations so with our found system of linear equations now once again we have three different methods available to solve this system we can solve by the substitution method we can solve by the elimination method and as well as we can also solve the system by using and augmented matrix and for anyone who is about to solve this system by using an augmented matrix then here's how we can set up the matrix and once again and now having the variables line up in separate columns right here the e variable line up in one column throughout the three different equations the m variable line up and here it reads 0 m so the m variable line up in one column and also the p variable line up in the third column so here's what our augmented matrix is going to look like we have a column for e with the coefficient 1 1 negative 1 throughout the the three equations. The M column now reads 1 minus 1 0 as the column for M. The P column reads 1 0 2 and I am going to use a vertical line to indicate the equal signs here can line up in one column. There are many textbooks who skipped it, this line and many other textbooks use this line to represent the equal signs. I am with those textbooks who use the equal signs to, uh, in, to line up as a column right here. It's just about the idea of separating, separating out the, the, the last column. So the last column here are those uh, values on the opposite side of the equation. But now together we have a an augmented matrix here and so solving the, the system of equation by using an augmented matrix once we've had once we've made it to the matrix setup then anyone can solve this matrix by reducing it by hand or reducing it using the OREF command that's available in the TI-83-84 calculator and also keep in mind that this command is available in many online web resource, many online tools, as well as commercial software out there. Row reducing this matrix using the TI-83 or 84 calculator using that OREF command from the TI-83-84 calculator brings the matrix Two, one, zero, zero, and on the other side of the equal signs, eighteen, zero, one, zero, two, four, zero, zero, one, nine, and so once reduced, the final matrix should looks like this where the diagonal entries are all one and everywhere else outside of the diagonal entries on the left hand side of our vertical line here has to be all zero and our last column on the right hand side are the this are, are some values after reduction 
And so the way it reads now, remind yourself that this column is corresponding to the E variable. This column in the middle on the left hand side is corresponding to the M variable and this is for the, the P variable. So the way it reads now according to the final reduced matrix, what it says now is that in the first row what it says is 1 E plus 0 M plus 0 P equals M plus 0 M plus 0 P. I don't need to write it down. So basically we have 1 E equals 18. The second row as an equation reads 0 E plus 1 M plus 0 P where I don't have to write the E and the P in second row equals 24. And the third row reads 0 E plus 0 M plus 1 P equals 9. So now what we have found here is the values for E, M and P. But don't forget after we found the solutions by solving for the system, let's spend our let's spend a couple more minutes to check for to check and ensure these are the correct solution of the system. So E now substituted by 18, we want to ensure that E plus M substituted by 24 plus P substituted by 9 to all equals 51. And yes, calculation does show that equality meets here, equality is satisfied here for the, our first equation. Again, the three values of E, M, and P are going to be substituted for the second equation. And the second equation reads E minus M, which in turn here, 18 minus 24. We want to find out if it's, we want to check if it's equals to minus 6. And yes, 18 minus 24 equals minus 6. So our values for E and M also satisfy the second equation. Now the third equation minus 18 substituting in for M plus 2 times 9 substituted for P will that equal 0 and yes obviously it will equal to 0. So now our final solution is E equals 18 the number of sections for English. and M equals 24, the number of sections for math course, and P equals 9, the number of sections for philosophy course. 